There are seldom few aircraft that served from the very beginning of the war to the very end, as most were either replaced by entirely newer aircraft, or introduced during the war with lessons learned from early wartime experience. This plane, however, the Curtis P-40, is one of the exceptions. The P-40 was a logical evolutionary step of Curtis's successful P-36 Hawk fighters, and began development in 1938 as a P-36 using an inline engine instead of a radial, for the purposes of increasing power and reducing drag. This development process was incredibly quick, with the first flight of the XP-40 being in October of the same year, but producing some concerning results as it had a nearly identical top speed for the cost of extra weight and reduced maneuverability, the cornerstone of the P-36's strength. Despite the early disappointment, Curtis Wright continued to work on the XP-40, figuring that refinements and advancements in the Allison V-1710 engine they were using would soon make up for these shortcomings and help push the P-40 to new heights, both figuratively and literally. For much of the spring of 1939, the XP-40 would be at the NACA for wind tunnel evaluation to help refine the aircraft's flight characteristics, which would result in the famous chin-mounted radiator we know today. With these refinements complete, the P-40 would enter service with the nickname Warhawk. They were also exported in large quantities to Great Britain and France and later Russia. These early export models would be called Tomahawks and performed much of their wartime career in North Africa to varying levels of success, though fared poorly in the Eastern Front with the VVS due to some factors outside of the plane's technical abilities, such as arriving without engines, no manuals, and no ability to train with the plant before being pushed into combat due to the brutality of the Eastern Air War at the time. The early P-40's main claim to fame, however, was its service with the American Volunteer Group in Burma, who are better known as the Flying Tigers. They were technically a private military company on hire for the Chinese to bolster its air force against the Japanese. In this theater, the P-40's weaknesses and strengths quickly made themselves known. While outmatched in low-speed maneuverability by the lighter and more agile Kai-43 Oscars, they had excellent dive performance and high-speed stability, as well as great durability. However, they also suffered from other shortcomings, particularly in range, firepower, and most infamously, high-altitude performance. The range issue would be partially solved by the C model, which allowed for the fitting of a drop tank, while the firepower complaint was sent back to Curtis for evaluation. The high-altitude performance problem, however, would be a chronic issue for the P-40's entire service life, so long as it relied on the Allison engine. In response to the issues of firepower, range, and smaller complaints like the complete absence of a radio, Curtis began development of a P-40D, which adopted the new nickname of Kitty Hawk, a nickname that would stick with all subsequent variants. Utilizing a newer, shorter Allison engine resulting in a larger distinctive chin scoop and an increase of firepower, the Kitty Hawk was a welcome modernization in comparison to the older Warhawks, especially to the likes of the Commonwealth Air Force and the now defunct AVG being integrated into the 23rd Fighter Group. The D and later E model P-40s would be the main workhorse of the P-40 type in its combat history, performing in North Africa with Free France and Britain, and the Burma-China-India theater as mentioned earlier with the 23rd Fighter Group, and even in the Pacific under the command of Australian, New Zealand, and U.S. Army Air Force pilots. While much more capable, the P-40 was still no Mustang, and still suffered from high-altitude performance issues as well as now a present weight problem, seeming to put on extra pounds with each variant going forward. An experimental P-40F powered by a Packard engine would be tested and used in combat to some good success, but produced in small numbers as Packard engines were directed almost entirely to the P-51 assembly line at this point in time, relegating the P-40 to just make do with the older Allison V-1710 engine, which was running into development problems. Back in combat, however, the Kitty Hawk was still managing to hold its own, still using its excellent dive performance and high-speed stability to pounce on enemies and then fly out of sight. It would be in fact be a P-40 that would serve Australia's highest scoring ace for 22 of his 28 and a half kills, Clive Caldwell, making him the ultimate ace of the P-40. Back home meanwhile, in 1944, production of the P-40 would be stopped, with a grand total of 13,700 planes being built over its five-year production time. It would still remain in service with the USAAF for a little bit after World War II, though quickly ended up being replaced by the large numbers of P-51s as a reserve aircraft. A short attempt to try and improve the P-40 with the XP-46 was tried during wartime, but wouldn't see any development past the prototype stage. Brazil would be the last operator of the type, retiring their P-40s in 1958. Currently, around 30 planes remain airworthy today, with 13 on display, being oddly the inverse of many other planes, having more aircraft flying than in museums. 
Though not as flashy or as capable as its younger cousin, the P-51, 200 pilots from the UK, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, and even the USSR became aces flying the P-40. It is, however, ironic that due to the P-40's importance and success during the war, that it can be directly tied to Curtis Wright's downfall as an aviation company, as post-World War II, they would sell their aviation assets to North American, having been unable to adapt to the oncoming jet age.